Aloha, what's up guys? Welcome back to Cook With Us. We are so excited to have you back. It's been a little while, we took a little break, but we're very excited. We've got an awesome, awesome recipe for you today. I'm Cece, I am going to be showing you how to make double carob chip mochi cookies. So that is the web address, d2e.co slash mochi cookie. You can follow along with the recipe. And I'm so excited. This is, it's, it's been a little while, but you know, we are excited to get back into cooking together and what a way to kick things off. So, of course, first step in the recipe would be to actually make our mochi. Okay, so I'm going to start off with some sweet rice flour. Now, this is exactly the same as glutinous rice flour. So if you, if you have glutinous rice flour at home, you can use that. Um, but this one is called sweet rice flour. Exactly the same, does exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna pop that in here into my little bowl and grab a little spoon. And the next thing I'm going to add is some arrowroot starch over here. So the, you cannot really substitute anything for the glutinous rice flour or the sweet rice flour. That is basically what gives mochi its consistency. Don't try and substitute, it will not work. So make sure you get the sweet rice flour and then arrowroot starch also helps to give it that stretchiness. So we wanna make sure that we don't substitute these two particular. Well, you can actually use cornstarch instead of arrowroot starch, but I love arrowroot starch. It comes from an herb, doesn't have any flavor, whereas cornstarch kind of sometimes can taste a little bit like corn. So um, I love the arrowroot starch. So I'm gonna pop that in there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this. This is our macadamia milk. If you have never tried macadamia milk, this is an awesome, awesome plant-based milk to try. It's really creamy. Uh, one of my favorite plant-based milks, actually. Okay, so I'm gonna pour a little bit of that in here and just give it a little bit of a stir. And we're basically just wanting it to all combine really well. Okay, it does combine very easily. You'll find that what rice flour, the sweet rice flour and the arrowroot starch are both very, very easy to combine with liquid. I don't know if you can see that there. It kind of looks like cement, white cement. <laughs> but we're going to add a little bit of color using this date sugar. Now you don't have to add color. I mean, having white mochi is totally fine, but we do want to add some sweetness. So we love date sugar. This is just dehydrated dates. So nothing unhealthy about it. It's really, really awesome. One of my favorite alternative sugars to use. But if you have, you know, coconut sugar or something like that, you could use that as well. I generally try to stay refined sugar free. So, so I don't really use normal sugar a lot, but let's pop this date sugar in there and you'll see the mochi is going to, the mochi mixture is going to turn a brown color. Like so. There you go. Now it's kind of like a beige cement. Okay, so that's all the mochi mixture is. Really super easy. I made mochi for the first time when I was testing this recipe and I was shocked how easy it is. Like it's so easy and it's really delicious and chewy and a great simple sweet treat. Now we're going to move over here. We're actually going to turn our stove top on and we're going to put this on high. We want the water to boil. I just have a little bit of water in here just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to boil the water and then we're going to pop the bowl on top of the pot. So basically we're steaming the mochi. Now, if you don't wanna steam, um, the reason I steam it is because uh, my, my boyfriend's place, which is where I tested the recipe, doesn't have a microwave. So I found that steaming cooked it really evenly all the way through. If you want to use a microwave, if you want to cheat, totally understandable. You can just wrap it with a little bit of plastic wrap or microwave safe wrap and then just, just cook it on high in the microwave for a minute then stir it a little bit 
and then another minute. Okay, but I'm going to leave this to steam and I'm actually going to turn this off and we're going to pretend that that magically cooked and we're going to have a look at what it looks like once it's done. So this is after about 20 minutes. You can actually tell it's very, very tough. You can tell it no longer looks like this. Very different consistency. Beige cement, tough mochi. Okay, so are there any questions so far about the mochi? Great. Okay, so I'm going to pop my gloves on. The reason being, it's going to get a little bit messy and mochi is very, very sticky. So just gonna put these gloves on temporarily just to knead the mochi. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and this will help also prevent it from sticking. Just some melted coconut oil. And then the kneading process is very simple. You just pick up your mochi. Oh, it's sticking to the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so you'll notice that I have mochi all over my bowl. That's because I made extra mochi because I, I prepared some cookies earlier. All right, so I'm going to knead that. And this step is really important to make sure your mochi is nice and stretchy. So just keep doing this, knead it. And then it turns out looking, you can see it's really starting to be stretchy. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that back into my bowl, take my gloves off, and now we're going to make our cookie dough. All right, super, super exciting. Let me pop that to the side there. And okay, this cookie dough is for a double carob chip cookie. So similar to a double chocolate chip, but we're using carob, which if you don't know, is an amazing superfood, an ancient superfood. And it has a somewhat similar taste to chocolate, but it's actually naturally sweet. Whereas chocolate is found as cacao in nature, which is naturally bitter. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to add a little bit of flax to my little bowl of water. And this is basically what is going to take the place of eggs. This is a vegan recipe. So I'm going to use my mochi spoon to give this a little bit of a stir. And then we're just going to set it aside and you'll see shortly that it starts to, starts to develop an egg-like consistency. Okay, I'm just gonna put that on the side here. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a third a cup of coconut oil. And you'll notice in the recipe, I actually said you could also use walnut oil. So when I was at the Kakako store, I discovered they have walnut oil. I didn't know that was a thing, but I bought some just to try it. And I put some in this cookie and it tasted really great. Now, not all of our stores have walnut oil and it's very walnutty. So if you don't like walnuts, not the oil for you. If you like that nutty flavor, it's walnuts have a very distinctive flavor. It's almost a little bit gritty. It does have that flavor in the oil. Otherwise, you can just use regular melted coconut oil. Then I'm going to put some almond butter. This is my favorite, I think one of my favorite products in our entire store. And that is because you can actually get this in our bulk department and it comes out basically ground fresh. So you, you just put a container under it, you press the button and it grinds up the almonds and it turns into almond butter. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a stir just to get this going. We want the almond butter and the coconut oil to be pretty well combined. So, so that the other stuff doesn't kind of clump to any of the almonds, the almond butter. Okay, and if you've ever bought almond butter from our bulk department, you know it smells so fresh and so good. One of my favorite smells in the store as well, apart from the deli. Everything in the deli smells good. Okay, then I'm going to add some, this is date sugar again, about a cup of date sugar, or about three quarters of a cup. Okay, 
pop that in there. Give that a stir. Okay. And then I'm going to add some carob powder. Now, with the date sugar, you can sift it in if you like, but I find that even sifting it, sometimes you develop these little lumps in the, in the date sugar. So I just kind of give them a squish with my spoon as I'm going along, just so we don't get any sugar lumps. And I'm going to put some carob powder. So this is what makes it a double carob chip cookie, not just a carob chip cookie. We have some carob in the mix as well. There we go. Give that a stir. This is going to turn it a really, really nice chocolatey brown color. Chocolatey, caroby brown color. We are making carob here. Okay, give that a stir. There's a lot of there's a lot of elbow work in this in this recipe. You need a little bit of elbow grease. And then got some maple syrup. Now, I added this, when I was making this recipe, I found that without the maple syrup, it doesn't have a really great sticky texture, which is why I'm adding both date sugar and maple syrup. I find the maple syrup really help, helps it to hold together as well as the flax egg. So popping the maple syrup in there, again, a little bit of a stir. And then I'm going to put some vanilla in here. Good old vanilla. How can you have a cookie without vanilla extract? That's just not a cookie. And then just a little bit of salt as well. I always add salt to desserts just because it really brings out the natural flavor. Okay, stir that all up. That's all your wet ingredients. You will notice that I'm still reserving the flax egg. You'll, you'll see why that is. It's because once you add the flour, it's really actually quite difficult to, to, um, to get it all to stick together. So if you put all the wet ingredients together first, including the flax egg, and then you add all the flour later, you'll find that that doesn't work. That's, that's not the ideal scenario. It actually doesn't work super well. So this is just some brown rice flour that I got from the bulk department. So a lot of our, not a lot, uh, our bulk goods, which are not from the bins that come from the top, the ones that are at the bottom, they're all pre-packaged. So th this was really conveniently pre-packaged. I just grabbed a bag. I'm going to put uh, some brown rice flour in. Oh, looks like I'm gonna use just the right amount. Perfect. And then I'm going to add some more arrowroot starch. And this is because I like a chewy cookie. If you're not really into chewy cookies, if you want one that's a little more crumbly, then you can feel free to just add more brown rice flour, but you will find that it doesn't hold together as well without the arrowroot starch. Arrowroot starch is so awesome. I put it, I make gravy out of it. Like every dish I, I, I make, I pretty much add arrowroot flour and it's awesome. Okay, so gonna mix this together and you will see what I mean by it just kind of doesn't hold together all that well if I put the flax egg in first. So I'm mixing, 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 mixing. And you'll see it kind of just looks like crumbles. That's okay, because we haven't added the flax egg just yet. Once we add the flax egg, we are going to get more hands on and we're going to actually stir and knead the cookie dough. Okay, see how it's kind of like a crumbly consistency there? Do we have any questions, Amber? Amber, our camera, camera lady. Amber's usually where I am, but Amber is actually filming me at the moment. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and Amber will read them out. Don't be shy. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Oh, no worries. Um, do you have any suggestions if people don't have flax for their egg yolks? Oh, great question. So Amber asked a great question about whether there are any suggestions for anyone who doesn't use flax as an egg replacement. Definitely. So when you're baking, you can actually use um, apple sauce as an egg replacement. Pretty similar, basically like a substitution exactly. However much flax egg, you would add apple sauce, the same amount. You can also use mashed banana, very similar amount as well. So mashed banana and applesauce I find are great for baking. 
Um, in other things, like if you're making like a burger or if you're making a patty or something like that, you can also use silken tofu, which is a great substitute as well. So there are a couple of ideas. And of course, the arrowroot starch really helps to hold it together as well. Great question, Amber. Okay, I'm going to give this a little bit of a stir and I'm gonna add this flax egg. This is two flax eggs. Throw that in there, give it a little mix. And then after I mix it for a little while, I'm going to start kneading it. This is a great recipe to do with your keiki if you know they're, if they're really interested in cooking and they want something that's super hands-on. This is a great hands-on recipe. So you start seeing it stick together. So at this point, I'm going to just go for it. I'm gonna just start kneading it together. You can still use your spoon if you want to, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm going to, now that I've kneaded it a little bit, I'm going to add some carob chips in here as well. Yes, absolutely. Here we go. These are Missy J's carob chips. They say sweet Aussie carob chips. They're the carob chips for me. Sweet Aussie carob chips. I love them. All right. So give this a little bit of a knead. And pretty soon, once it's all stuck together, we are going to actually put it all together. We're going to put the mochi in with the cookie dough. It's, it's all very exciting here. Okay, so that's pretty much the consistency you'll need. It's a very messy recipe, but that's okay. Especially if you're, you know, like I said, if your cakey wants something to do and they want to get involved, this is a great recipe. They can actually do a great job of forming the, the cookies. So I'm going to grab this tray over. Yes. Oh, yes. Great question. So they do, but it's coconut sugar. So it's not traditional refined sugar. Coconut sugar is very, very high in antioxidants and minerals. Really, really good for you. So um, like date sugar, it's a great alternative. So good question. Yeah. No refined sugar, but there is coconut sugar. And plus, like I said, carob is naturally very sweet. So you'll notice, even if you just try this carob powder on its own, you'll notice that it, it has a subtle sweetness to it already, even without adding any sweeteners. The other thing I should mention as well, we sell both raw carob powder and toasted carob powder. So if you are making raw recipes, like you know a raw carob slice or something like that, you can use the raw one. But I find that the toasted carob powder actually has a lot more flavor. It's very aromatic. You can smell it, literally, I can smell it from here. Um, so I, I like to use the toasted one in, in cooking. Yeah, okay, so here's some recycled parchment paper that I used earlier. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab a handful of my cookie dough, about this much. And I mean, you can grab more if you wanna make larger cookies, totally fine. You'll just need to increase the cook time and you'll also need to add more mochi. All right, so I basically make like a little flat shape, excuse my caribbean hands, and then I'm going to grab some of my mochi that I kneaded earlier, enough, about, about like a thumb size. I have small thumbs, so a small thumb size. And then I'm just gonna roll this into a rough ball, and then I'm going to put it in the middle like this flatten it a bit and then I just join my cookie dough on either side. Oh, I'm missing a carob chip. Let me just put one right there so that we can still call this a double carob chip mochi cookie. And then I'm just gonna do that and place that there. And then I can make as many as I want. The recipe makes about eight to 10 cookies, about eight large ones or 10 smaller ones. And then you can zoom in on the cookie if you like while I go and grab the, the done ones. I have a question actually. Yes. How do you spell the carob powder in bulk? Oh, that is a great question. You know, um, 
There, not every store has it in bulk. There are a couple of stores that do. Um, so yeah, you can definitely check it out. Uh, check out your local store. Give them a call and see if they do have it. I know not every single one has it. So great question. Okay, this is what the cookies turn out like. These are our carob chip cookies. And okay, our double carob chip mochi cookies, my mistake. Okay, let me do a little bit of a pull. Ready, are you ready for this? Okay. Oh. There is the mochi! Yay! Can you see that mochi goodness? Love it. There we go, okay, let me, let me take a bite. Let me taste this. Mmm. Mmm. It's as good as the other day when I tested it. Honestly, these cookies are so good. I think this might be one of my best cookie recipes yet. That's a big call. I make a lot of cookies. Actually, true story. The other day when I tested these recipes, I made eight large cookies. My boyfriend ate, tried them after dinner. He ate five out of the eight cookies in one setting. Great, great cookie. So again, if you want that recipe, you can head to d2e.co slash, slash mochi cookie. Definitely check that out. And if you wanna buy the ingredients, you can actually, there's a shopping list on the recipe, so you can click through. Amber, did you, did you have a question? Oh, great, two questions. Um, so can you make the cookies ahead of time and freeze mm -hmm. them? Good question. Oh, I'll answer that one first. So I've never tried that. What I would say is it might actually be better to refrigerate the cookie dough instead of, I find that generally when you, when you bake cookies already, it just becomes a very sad situation once you freeze them. So what I would recommend, I've never tried freezing cookie dough actually, because usually I make, I end up making the cookies within within like a week of me making the dough. But you can refrigerate this cookie dough and you can, you can, you know, make it two batches if you wanted to do that. But I wouldn't recommend freezing the cookie itself once it's been baked. Great question. Okay, yeah. and then next question. Yes. Can you add any flavors to the mochi, like peanut butter? Oh, you are speaking my language. Yes, please add flavors. In fact, now I, I feel like you've just completely upstaged me. I could have added, you know, almond butter or peanut butter or something to the mochi and made a flavored mochi, and then it would have been like a double carob chip almond butter mochi cookie, which would be incredible. Great idea, yes. Please, please be creative with the mochi. These recipes, you know, when, when we encourage you to cook with us, we also want you to, to modify the recipes to suit your taste. If there's something you don't like, if there's something you would prefer, if you want to be creative and add something, we encourage creativity in the kitchen. So absolutely, you can definitely add flavor to the cook, to the mochi. Okay, uh, so definitely head to the recipe. If you want to grab the, the ingredients as well, you can click on the shopping list. It'll take you to our Mercado online shopping platform. And we have an amazing deli deal for you today. So... If you are wanting something for your keiki and you don't want to cook with them, totally fair. Feel free to order from our deli. You can get 50% off any one keiki menu item just by using this coupon code KEIKI50OFF. And that is good all the way until the 9th, which is next Friday. So feel free to use this code if you don't want to cook with your keiki. If you do want to cook with your keiki, we would love you to cook with them as well, especially this recipe. So if there are no other questions, we just want to thank you again for cooking with us. Amber will be back in a couple of weeks. We're, we're going to be running our Instagram live classes now every first and, and third Friday of each month. So make sure you tune in in two weeks time and happy Aloha Friday. <laughs>